The gameplay of Age of Calamity is pretty hectic. If you aren't used to hack and slash games like this and are just coming over from Breath of the Wild, the combat and mechanics may seem quite daunting with all the different moves and combos and so on. But after a deep analysis, I was able to find patterns in the gameplay mechanics and other hidden details that can help the general community get a much better grasp at the game, as there are a lot of important details and stats that the game doesn't explain despite being extremely important. So without further delay, here are some greatly important things you should know about combat in Age of Calamity. First things first, the weapon numbers. Over the game, you'll find and use many different weapons similar to their Breath of the Wild counterparts, and they all have a little attack number by them symbolizing their strength. But don't be confused, because these numbers work greatly different than how they do in Breath of the Wild. In that game, if you are using, let's say, a 36 damage sword, you are going to deal exactly 36 damage points to an enemy, assuming no other buffs or criticals are in play. But in Age of Calamity, this number is only one of the determining factors in damage output, as the other is the base damage of your character, which increases with level. So attacking this moblin with an 11 damage sword as a level 1 does less damage than attacking them with the same sword as my current level 17. However, since the character's base damages are not revealed in the game, along with the fact that enemies don't have numerical health bars, figuring out the exact stats behind how damage calculation works is going to be impossible for now, until some future testing or code leakage reveals more information. In the meantime, my greatest piece of advice is to go to your options and turn on enemy health bars, which allows you to see the health bars of all weak enemies to understand exactly how your weapons work against them. It's kind of odd how the setting is defaulted to off, considering just how much it helps. But utilizing the information about base damage output though, this can always be increased by chaining several attacks together or performing combos. Generally, the longer into a combo you are by using the regular attack button, the more the damage is multiplied with each attack, albeit by a small margin. But it's the reason why some enemies that go down with 4 individual hits may go down with 3 comboed hits. However, the biggest question I see asked is to break down how this regular and strong hit chart works for each character, as the amounts of moves really seems daunting, but we can break this down easiest by comparing it to a game we all know and love, Breath of the Wild. For a one-handed sword, you know how you can slash your weapon in groups of four? Think of it like that, but depending on how many slashes deep you are into this combo when the special button is pressed, determines what type of special you do, usually increasing with power. So after one attack and pressing special, you'll swing into the air and are allowed to use a paraglider. After two attacks and pressing special, it activates a shield surf. After three, you'll do a powerful spin attack and after 4, you'll do an upward spin attack that sends you into the air. All of these moves are quite unique, but getting a grasp at which ones come after which hits in the combo can make your life a lot easier, and you don't have to worry about spamming them. And although we just explained this for Link, Impa and Zelda work basically off the same system, just with different moves. Spamming the regular attack button will take you through the normal attack combo cycle, slightly increasing with damage, but the special attack that follows each of these moves are generally unique. But one of the most important moves that each of these characters all have is their aerials, which is defined as whenever the character is in the air and is able to pull out their paraglider. These are ideal moves to pull off, considering that they generally allow the character to do mid-air attacks, then slam down to do insane amounts of damage, amongst other things. And fortunately, there are many ways to trigger aerials for them. The most universal way is to press B to dodge against the wall, then press it again when the wall jump command appears, which allows you to pull off an aerial move wherever there's a wall, crates, or any other vertical surface, pretty much. Also, a lot of the special moves, specifically Link and Impa's first comboed special, which finishes in the aerial state, allows you to get more hits and then slam down to finish that combo off. Zelda even gets a cool aerial move by pressing the strong attack button twice, which creates a staircase of Cryonis blocks to start an aerial attack chain. Basically, aerial attacks are a great way to start off or finish a strong attack combo in the game, so make sure to use them alongside your other strong moves and most importantly, experiment. Other than all this though, there is only a few more details I wanted to go over in this video that I feel like are necessary for immediate play of this game. One are the character's unique abilities by pressing ZR, which consists of Link's bow and arrow, which is self-explanatory, Impa's Sheikah symbol, which allows her to take an enemy and gain temporary clones of herself when the enemy is attacked, 
and Zelda's Detonation, which allows her to self-destruct any and all rune objects she has currently placed. But my favorite of the bunch has got to be Link's arrows, and not because of their normal use, cause they're kinda weak. But if you use them while you're in your aerial states or have the paraglider out, just like Breath of the Wild, you'll actually enter bullet time and unleash them in a far greater quantity with less knockback to guarantee that the enemies will get destroyed by them all. In fact, a lot of the cool Breath of the Wild mechanics carry over to this game, specifically with flurry rushing, which can be achieved by perfect dodging away from an enemy's strong attack, or parrying with Link's shield, which can be done by attacking with the shield out. Heck, you can even parry a freaking guardian laser just like you can in Breath of the Wild, which I truly find to be so awesome. But anyways, that is all for my first combat breakdown of Age of Calamity, and I hope I was able to clear it up a bit for you and make it more easy to understand. This is only the very beginning for informative Age of Calamity content to come on this channel, so let me know what things you'll like me to look into next to help you all out. And feel free to like and subscribe here for more videos in the following weeks. But before we wrap up the video, I just wanted to give a formal thank you for reaching 50,000 subscribers on YouTube, as the support has been literally insane over the past year, and I'm always happy to make informative content like this to help you all out. Also, a special shout out to my amazing patrons and YouTube members who help support the channel. If you would like to help support me here for as little as a dollar a month, all the info can be found in the description below. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.